And here are your hosts of the Mets cast, Nick Durst and John Brown. Spring training is finally over, and that means it's time once again for New York Mets baseball, which means it's time once again for another edition of the Mets cast right here on WG Sports. I'm Nick Durst. Joining me, of course, the co-host of the program is John Brown. You can find us on Twitter throughout the season. I am at Nick underscore Durst, and John is on Twitter at S underscore Sports, and we are going to be tweeting up a storm Thursday for opening day. And, of course, throughout the host season. Hopefully, they're good tweets about how the team's doing great. But who knows? We have to uh, be cautiously optimistic. John, right off the bat here, we got to start off about how much of an influence our show has on the front office. Our last episode was about how terrible Hans Robles is. And what is he pointing at? Well, you know what? Sandy Olison was listening, and he was pointing... To Triple A, because that's where he's going. He's off the roster. Hallelujah, John. Well, yeah. Let's hope that they were listening to us. But if they weren't, at least they were looking at you know the stats, or they watched some of the uh, some spring training, or you know, th- there's a lot of reasons why Hans <laughs> Robles should be in Triple A. But you know, our show could be one of them. I'd say it's a contributing factor because for the past two seasons. We haven't gone one episode without hammering this guy, and it's about time he's off the roster. He probably should have just been, like, released, but he's in the minors. Hopefully we don't have to see him in the majors this year, because that would be a big issue. The other news was that Zach Wheeler has been optioned to AAA, which was a little bit of a surprise for me. And with the news of Jason Vargas starting the season in the DL, we have to figure out the rotation here. John, my rotation would be Syndergaard, DeGrom, Harvey, Mats, and Lugo, because I think Lugo is actually really good, and Giselman, he was terrible last year, and I just can't trust the guy at all. I think Lugo definitely should be in the rotation, and this is probably just going to be temporary anyway, because the plans are for Vargas to be starting by the end of the month. But what would your rotation be? And also, were you surprised that Wheeler was sent to AAA? I was surprised by Wheeler going to AAA. Um, I would say the only good thing, you know, the only, you know, uh, I would say uh, silver lining would, is that, you know, they want to keep him stretched out because they don't want him to be in the bullpen because it is, it's a waste. It's a waste to use a guy like that in the bullpen. Um, but on the same note, I wish they would have just given him the, the spot in the rotation. You know, I like Lugo and I think Lugo actually has good stuff. And it was a shame that he got hurt last year. Um, I think Giselleman, Giselleman has sort of pitched himself into the bullpen. Uh, and, you know, I know it's his, not his throwing hand, it's his other hand, but I'm not, you know, I'm not a big Vargas guy. Uh, you know, he's, I think he's a little bit over the hill. I think he's he's good at what he is. He's an inning eater, uh, you know, Bartolo clone-esque. But in reality, I think we should have just gone with um, the Wheeler. But I guess for whatever reason, I don't know if they don't think his stuff is there, if they don't think he's stretched out enough. You know, uh, smarter the people than I have, have made that decision. But uh, I, I like your rotation. Um <laughs> I would probably go. I would prefer to go to Grom, Syndergaard. Well, but we both Syndergaard. would, but I'm, I, we we know that it's Syndergaard to Grom is one and two. They already announced that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, nothing you can do there with Lugo. Lugo, though, I don't think he'd be a good reliever. But he he is a he was a big surprise in 2016. He got hurt last year, but he was dominant for the most part when he was on the mound in 2016 and 2017. And he, to me, is just so much better than Giselleman. I think Giselleman, out of all these guys, he's the one that you could put in the bullpen because he might have bullpen type of stuff. And you have to remember, Montero, he's out for the season now for Tommy John, so you could have Giselleman be the long reliever. That works out. And Wheeler, I'm on the same page as you. He would have not been good in the bullpen role. But hopefully, sending him to AAA doesn't mess with his psyche because now he might be like so 
mad and he might just pitch terrible, which would be really bad. And I agree with you that I would at least have him start the season until Vargas came back because it's pretty much a given that Vargas is going to take a rotation spot. And I think Wheeler being in AAA, I don't really think it's going to be good for him. I think it's going to be bad for his mental psyche. Yeah, you know, I, I agree with, with that, that Wheeler take. You know, sending him down to the minors, especially because the Mets minor league, uh, you know, ballpark is in Las Vegas. You know, you do risk the fact that the ball flies out there. He could go down there and get hit up a little bit, and that could hurt his psyche even more. You know, the risk for reward here doesn't make sense to me, and I'm not so sold on Vargas that I think he has to be the number five starter. Um, I would I would have given it to Wheeler and let him struggle and then, you know, made a decision after that. Right, so that's that's the, the pitching situation. Now let's move on to the lineup. I believe that Brandon Nimmo should be in center field over Lagaris every day until Conforto comes back. Conforto is way ahead of schedule. There's even rumored talks that he'll be back by like the fifth game of the season, which would be amazing. And originally they were saying, oh, maybe Conforto, originally as in last week, because the first originally thing was that he'd be back in May. But last week there was some rumors, oh, we could have Conforto start the year as a pinch hitter. Like, that's a total waste. That's not really getting the guy back to where he needs to be. And But Conforto will be back. So in the meantime, I would have Nemo out there starting over Lagares because Nemo, he's proven he could hit in spring training and in September last year. He was a great pinch hitter throughout the year. And I think it's time to to see what you got with this guy, at least until Conforto comes back. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think Nimmo, so today's Nimmo's birthday or whatever, so happy birthday to him. Um, I, I do think that he's at that magic age. You know, I always talk about this. 27 is the magic age in, he's not 27 yet, he's 26. But 27 is the magic age in major leagues. Either you got it or you don't. It's where you stop becoming a prospect and you start becoming a bust. So I think that this year is big for him. And I'd love to see him get a ton of that bats there in the beginning. You know, I love Lagaris's glove, but Nimmo has proven that A, he covers enough ground center field, so he's not, you know, he's not a liability at all. And, you know, the guy has a really good eye. He walks a lot. I know the Mets love that. And he's been able to swing the bat enough to get himself in the lineup. I think it's his job to lose at this point. You know, and by job I mean fill in for Conforto, obviously. Right. But if he's good, I could definitely see a scenario where Calloway goes to Jay Bruce and says, hey, Jay, we, we need you to play some first base because Nimmo is just tearing it up. We got to keep him in the lineup at the top. We need speed up here because it's something we don't have. So, uh, you know, once mm. once once Conforto comes back, he'll obviously would lead off if they're just taking Nimmo out of the lineup. But it doesn't really give you that speed that you need that the Mets have been lacking pretty much ever since Jose Reyes originally left the team, which is crazy. What would your lineup be for opening day you know, I would I would probably do um, uh, let's see, Nimmo leading off, obviously. Then um, Rosario batting second. Uh, hmm. Now I don't like putting Jay Bruce third, so I would go uh, Cespedes, then Bruce, then Frazier, Cabrera, Gonzalez. Then Darno. Uh, Darno and then the pitcher spot. Ugh, I don't really like that either, but I would say that's probably that's probably the best you're gonna get. Maybe what you do is you move Gonzalez up one, um, you know, just to try to break break it up a little bit. Um but yeah, I don't know. You know, Gonzalez, he's a power hitter that's not hitting for power. So, you know, he's it's tough, man. It's right. really tough. So you don't want to put him in the nine spot either. You don't want to put him in the eight spot either, because that was slow. just yeah, but listen, Gonzalez, you got you got to see what he what he does. Give let him let him play the first one, see what happens. But my lineup, I would go Nimmo, Cespedes, Bruce, Frazier, Gonzalez, Darno, Cabrera, Rosario. So I go lefty, righty, lefty, righty, lefty, righty, switch hitter, righty, and pitcher, of course. Yeah, but you so you're gonna you're gonna bat Cespedes, who's arguably your best hitter. You're gonna bat him second. Well, it worked pretty well for Aaron Judge last year. I mean, the only reason I said I'm going to bat Cespedes second is because the Mets have already come out and said he's definitely batting second. It's really, it's weird to me. Me and your old school guys, the power hitters should always bat three or four. But when you look at this lineup, Cespedes is the second fastest guy in, uh, in the lineup. Oh, actually, Rosario is faster, definitely. But he's he's probably not going to bat in the top two to start the season because he's 
He doesn't have enough at bats. So when you look at this lineup, it's a lot of like older guys who are slow, and the options are are really limited. Mm. You, you're right, though. There's not a lot of um, you know dynamic skill sets here. We got a lot of guys who are going to be you know. 250 260 batters they're gonna hit a lot of home runs this team but you know it's feast and famine so you want to try to spice it up a little bit um you know i guess the the thinking behind putting your best hitter either first or second is that they get more at bats that way that's right but um i don't know if you remember remember terry collins tried uh making jose reyes the three batter no that wasn't even terry collins that was um what's his face terry Terry Manuel. yeah that was you know i don't that was great (laughs) you know it's it's just because depending on where you where you bat in the lineup it depends on what kind of pitches you're seeing, you know, um, not all the time, but at least definitely on the first go through. So, you know, I don't like messing with it. You know, it, if a guy's used to being, you know, batting three or four, you know, he's getting a, a bat in the first inning. He's, you know, he's hitting with people on all the time. His goals are a little different. He his his object is to, you know, drive guys in so he can really hack at a ball a little bit different. Um, you know, when you're the, the first or second, you're, you're a place setter, you're trying to get on base, you try to work counts. It's just a different mindset. And I, you know, I, this isn't a video game. I don't think you could just move guys around that way without it having some sort of, um, you know, adverse effect. Right. And the thing with the lineup is that I think Darno would actually be a good two hitter, but they say that Darno and Plowacki are going to play every other day. So I don't want to have it where it's like a different lineup every day. That's the Mets that they do it all the time. Every day is a different lineup. I want to get some continuity here where you have the same lineup five or six days a week and if throughout the season because that's how the guys really get the chemistry going. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, catcher is going to need a ton of time off anyway. And I think they're, they're – you know, their thinking behind it is, hey, Darno has shown that he can hit in the pros, but, you know, he can't stay healthy enough to stay in the lineup. So we give him a ton of time off. We'll really get a good look at Puecki. And, hey, maybe we'll keep Darno healthy. I don't know. You know, I, I, that platoon, you know, um, some teams have, have done, hey, you know, have done it wonderfully and have done it great. Um, it, you know, it's just one of those things where I'm not sure – because what you don't want to happen is a guy is in a groove and now he he's missing at bats. You're taking him out of the lineup when he's hitting the ball good, just because of you know uh, it's not his turn. It, it's a, it gets a little tricky. I, I would say if the Mets are in a pennant race, then you sort of reevaluate it. If not, you know, and then this is a learning year again. Then you can sort of just do the platoon and see what you got. Right by the end of the season, I'm hoping that Rosario is leading off because he's the fastest guy on the team and. You're expecting big things from him, man. By the end of the year, if you have your one, two, three batters, Rosario, Conforto, and Cespedes, that's going to that's gonna be meaning that you are having a pretty good offensive year. So we, we need to hope for Rosario to, to truly develop this year if the Mets want to, want to win a lot of games. And, and last year, we all thought they were going to go to the World Series and win it. And they only won seventy games. So according okay. to uh, according to Odd Shark, Odds Shark for this season, if you wanted to place some bets on over unders, they have the Mets winning eighty one games. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. I think that's a pretty solid number. I could see them winning like eighty three, eighty four though. But John, over under eighty one games for the Mets. I'm going optimistic. Optimistic. I'm going to be, you know, take the white pill on this one. I'm going with over. I think the Mets are going to win 86 games. That's what I said on Twitter today. Uh, 86 games. You know, 86 is a lucky number for us. But um, we're going to get there by young guys staying healthy in the rotation. Um, by some guys finally, you know, taking the next step in Puecki. Um, You know, maybe Puecki steals that job and he becomes our everyday catcher. Um, you know, he's a good enough defensive catcher. He just needs to be able to hit. And sort of the other side of the coin for for Darno, um, you know maybe um, maybe Nimmo gets five hundred at bats. He you know he he hits fifteen home runs. He walks a bunch and he has like a four hundred on base and he's a, a you know very good leadoff hitter. Any of these things could break. You know Conforto could come back, stay healthy, and become a thirty home run, hundred RBI guy. If any of these you know not that crazy of, of situations come comes together, then I think we have uh, we have something. Um, I'm also going to throw in a little spiciness. I think that, uh, you know, Phil Evans is going to go in there and steal someone's job due to injury. Super Phil. Yep. Rookie of the year, John? Rookie of the year, our everyday second baseman. He's going to hit 12 home runs, 
knock in 80 and, and uh, he's gonna, he had three, uh, 325. I love that. And Phil, Phil Evans, rumored to make the open of their roster, well deserved, won the batting title at Double A Binghamton in 2016. The guy has been working his tail off to make it to make the, 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 the major league roster. He came up a little bit at the end of last season, but he's traditionally a shortstop. He can now play second, third, first, left, right. And this spring training, he was like, you know what? Give me the catcher's equipment. I had to catch too. So if you're a third, if you have a third string, if you're able to catch and be the third string catcher, that's good news for you, and because the major league team will love that. And of course, it doesn't hurt that he's a good hitter. Now that's the Mets. We'll both go over on the 81 over under prediction. Let's look at the other team that's good in the division. That's the Nationals. They're, they won 97 games in 2017. They're over under for this year is 92 and a half. I'm going over, and that's because they don't have Dusty Baker anymore. <laughs> that, is, that is good. That is good. I'm going under. Um, you know, I think Harper is going to get broken again. You know, he's been phenomenal, but, you know, all good things come to an end. Um, I I think they're going to be in a, in a really, you know, cutthroat, real close uh, division with the Mets, where it's going to come down to the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I think Max, they're going to win 93 games. They're going to, they're not going to be as good as they were. So... Uh, if the Mets stay healthy, I think they definitely could have a chance to to compete with them. The other teams in the division, of course, are the Phillies. They won 66 games last year, and their ah. they're over-under is 75.5, and, and I'm going to say over because they added Arietta and they brought in uh, Santana. So Arietta alone is going to probably give them a few more wins. Yeah, his, you know, his war is definitely much better. Um they're still going to be bad, but they're in like that rebuilding stage. You know, uh, I'll say over. I'd say they're probably somewhere in the 70s, the high 70s. For sure. Uh, the other team, the Braves, they won 72 games last year. Their over-under is 74 and a half, and I will go under. I think they'll win between 71 and 74 games. Uh, I'm also going to go under, uh, part of, partly because I think the Mets are just going to be better. I think there was a, a bunch of games last year against the Mets where they, you know, we had it in hand and our bullpen just gave it to them. Um, so, you know, four games is a pretty big swing uh, of, you know, you don't have Robles out there throwing right. can home runs, you know, left, right and center. Then uh, I think that the, the Mets are going to beat a couple of those games. Um, you know, no one on the Braves really excites me. You know, I like size more, but you know, he, I like his glove, but that's about it. Um, you know, I'd say under. And then, the Miami Marlins, they won 77 games last year, second place in the division. They sell off everybody. The over-under is 64.5. And and I'm going under. I think this might be the, the worst team ever, record-wise. Yeah, they're going to be bad. They're going to be 1962 Mets bad. I hope the uh, worst. They, the worst. That would be great. They sold the farm. And, but you know what? You know, Getting rid of that humongous contract from uh, Mike Stanton, Listen, yeah, you don't have John um, Carlo nowadays. Oh bullshit! You don't get to change your name. Whatever your name was when you broke in the league, that's your name. I'm not calling you anything else. So you going under? Going under. All right. So at least who's winning the at least? Uh, the the Mets are going to win it by a game. Mm, nice. All right. I'm going with the Nationals, uh, but I think it's going to be very close. Very close. Could be within a game or two, maybe three. And let's look at the NL Central. I'm going with the Cubs. How about you? Well, I think the Cubs are like a no-brainer on that one. All right. And then the West. Dodgers. The Dodgers. Okay. I Everyone's probably saying Dodgers. I guess I'll go Dodgers. But I think the Rockies will be good this year again. And I could see them maybe hanging tight with them for a lot of the season. But the Dodgers will definitely win the division, I think. Wild cards, I have the Cardinals and the Mets as the wild card teams. I'm going Nationals and the Pirates. Ooh, okay. The Pirates. That's uh, shocking to me since they, tra- they traded their best pitcher and their best player, in McCutcheon and Cole, and their over-under is 73, and they're coming off a 75-win season. So you got them going way over, huh? 
Yeah, I think I think Young Guns. Uh, they have a good program. They have a good ballpark. They have great fans. Um, also, there's like no pressure for them. You know what I mean? Like, if the Cubs don't win that division, you know, the the world will become crumbling down. You know, if the Pirates do, if the Pirates win 75 games, their fans will be fine. So you know, it just takes a little bit of extra special something. Um, I I just like the program. I like I like what they're doing out there. All right, and now let's real quick run through the AL. AL East, who you got? Uh, unfortunately, the Yankees. Man, I don't know. I mean, the Yankees or the Red Sox, I don't like either of their managers. I don't think either of them are going to be really good. But I guess I'll go mm, Yankees by, like, a hair. Um, all right, so the Central Indians. I got the Indians. How about you? Yeah, Terry Francona, the Indians. Um, they've been able to do really do it. They have a great lineup. Um, West Astros. Ooh, the Astros. Yeah, I do like that. I do like the Astros. I, it's it's just still weird to me when we talk about the Astros in the American League. Well, they, they won the championship last year, so it's treating them well. Wild cards, I will go with the Los Angeles Angels and I guess the Red Sox. How about you? Yeah, the Red Sox have a good ball club. Um, you know, they're they're going to hang in there with the Yankees. You know who knows, but the the Yankee lineups is, is is going to be tough. But I'm going Red Sox. Hmm. Hmm. The Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. That's a good one. Do you think that young pitcher from Japan that wants to be a position player? You think he's just going to be rule the world? I don't um, know. That he he was so bad in spring training that there's talks of him starting the year in single A. So <laughs> really not. But listen, they got it. They have the best player in baseball, Mike Trout. They made a ton of additions in the off season. I, they were right in it last year, 80 wins, and that was with Trout missing like two months. So I don't see right. I, I don't see how they wouldn't make the playoffs this year unless there's a big injury. Because look at the other teams that in the, the Blue Jays, they're not even trying. They're not they don't they're not trying really to win. But don't, with they couldn't sign people. I guess they're trying to win. But the Rangers, they don't have a good team. The Mariners, they choke every single year ever since they got Cano. The Rays, they traded off people as usual. The Oakland A's, they're not trying. They're not trying to win. Uh, the other team I would say is the Twins. The Twins made it last year. Um, they're 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 still a good young team, but I just think the Angels made a lot of additions to put them ahead. The, the Tigers, they're going to be terrible. The Royals are not going to be very good. So the White Sox, they're not going to be too good either. The Orioles, they don't have good pitching. So really, I mean, between the Twins or the Angels, John, I, I can't see any any other option between the, the, other than those two. Yeah, the only edge that you give to the Twins are the fact that they don't have to play out West, which is a you know arguably a better division. So they'll be able to you know get some more scavenger wins against you know an aging aging Detroit right, team. Detroit, yeah, the White Sox. All right, so there we have it. Now, John, go ahead and tell me who are the Mets playing in the World Series, or do you not have the Mets in the World Series? I do. Always. Always. Every year. Sorry. Right. Go go back to the tape. You can see for years I've been saying it. I'm going the Mets, Red Sox, rematch 1986. Hmm. All right. I would love to see the Mets sweep the Yankees in the World Series, but I will go with the St. Louis Cardinals and the Houston Astros in the World Series. That was or, World Series pick. <laughs> I can already see the ratings for that. Boring. Well, terrible. Right, the Cardinals, they're one of the most historic franchises. But uh, we'll see. I mean, I, I hope, hopefully we're hoping for the Mets. But the season is about to begin. Enjoy opening day. Enjoy the, enjoy the opening weekend where the Mets are playing day games. And we will be here throughout the whole season to talk about the Mets, whether it's good or or bad. Well, let's hope for the best. Let's hope it's good. And once again, I'm Nick Durst. You can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore Durst. John is on Twitter at S underscore sports. And until next time, everybody, let's go Mets. <laughs> Mets.